ان الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القران المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي All praise and thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of the worlds the one who created us all from a single soul the one that we believe in as the only one god we praise him and we thank him and we ask him for guidance and forgiveness and we seek protection in him from the malice of our own souls and evil consequences of our actions whoever Allah guides no one shall misguide and whoever Allah lets go astray no one shall be able to guide we bear witness that there is no god except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has no partners no associates and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the slave and messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran o you who believe be conscious of allah the way you should be conscious of him and do not die except in a state of islam except in a state of submission to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may allah make us among them amin ya rabbal alamin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says o you who believe be conscious of allah and always be straightforward truthful in your speech he will rectify your actions for you and forgive you your sins and whoever obeys allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get us that status we believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator sustainer cherisher nurturer and guide We believe in the guidance that came to him in the form of divine message brought through the angels we believe in all the angels we believe in the messengers and don't distinct distinguish between them la nufarriqu bayna ahadin min rusuli we believe in all of them starting from the time of adam alayhi salam to nuh alayhi salam ibrahim musa isa alayhi salam and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may allah's peace and blessings and mercy be upon the messengers and upon the followers of the messengers and may allah make us among them amin ya rabbal alamin we also believe in the day of judgment in the day of reckoning in the paradise and in uh, the hellfire and we believe in divine decree al qadr which is all from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise and thank allah especially for providing us with clear proofs and manifest guidance in the form of clear message and messengers who came to teach deliver and act upon the message given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we seek to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following the guidance and giving getting goodness in this world and in the hereafter and avoiding uh, punishment as we seek to avoid the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it seems prudent that we talk about some of the strengths and some of the weaknesses that we have in this regard which can be relevant to our ta'alluq billah our relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our being conscious and aware of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our avoiding his displeasure and if we get time we can talk about some of the tools and strategies and that's what i really want to um, uh, get to inshallah and uh, some of the threats that we may have we don't have time to do a full swot analysis um, in this uh, limited presentation but inshallah we'll uh, touch upon some topics and talk about the tools and strategies inshallah uh, and then make dua uh, towards the end so what better time than this as we wrap up the month of ramadan as we had the opportunity to stand up in prayer in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
as we had an opportunity to listen to the message of Allah, the Quran, in the nights of Ramadan, as we had an opportunity to fast and uh, try to attain taqwa through our fasting, as we try to control our speech in the month of Ramadan in a state of fasting, as we uh, build our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and especially in the last uh, 10 nights, we try to uh, reduce our relationship with the outside world. Uh, it seems like this is a good time uh, to talk about the taqwa, talk, talk about the relationship that we have uh, developed with Allah through the messenger, through the message uh, that he sent, and through this special blessed month of Ramadan. We hope that our taqwa is better than what it was before the month of Ramadan, and we hope that it does not drop down to the level um, if it was lower before Ramadan. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our siyam and our qiyam and our Quran recitation and our ta'alluq uh, with Allah and with Messenger and, um, and with the message, insha'Allah. So what are some of the strengths that have been given to us uh, that help us attain taqwa, help us attain God consciousness and uh, develop a stronger and a keen relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So first part of it is knowledge. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not hold anyone accountable um, for something which is beyond their capacity. Adam alayhi salam, he was asked uh, to declare the names of things, but before that he was given the wus'ah, he was given the capacity, uh, he was given the knowledge. Um, how about us? We have to open the book and read, right? We have to, um, you know, attain our knowledge. There's, there's actually a hadith which says, Talabul ilmi uh, farida. Uh, uh, for every Muslim believing man and women, uh, attaining knowledge is uh, is compulsory. Um, so how was the how was the status of Adam alayhi salam and what kind of tests that he went through? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fair and he is just. And he tested Adam alayhi salam about the knowledge that he gave to Adam alayhi salam and we're going to be tested about the knowledge which has been uh, given to us. However, um, before I was born, and before any one of us was born, we were given the knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran where he gathered the souls of all the descendants of Adam alayhi salam um, uh, who are going to be born until the day of judgment. Um, so all human souls were, were gathered. And they were asked the question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked them, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? And all the souls from Adam alayhi salam all the way to the last person, they said, they said, indeed, you are our Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, took our witness uh, for that. So there is knowledge which is given to us the way that knowledge was given to Adam alayhi salam, and that is the knowledge and cognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we already have. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the soul when it is blown into, uh, into the fetus and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires um, the good and the evil. And he talks in the Quran about opposites. Sometimes he talks about the light and he talks about the dark. He talks about people of the right hand. He talks about people of the left hand. He talks about people who believe and those who reject. He talks about people of Jannah and he talks about people of Jahannam. And we're going to talk about some of the, those uh, some of those aspects as part of this presentation as well, inshallah. So um, uh, talking about knowledge. So part of the knowledge is what was given to the souls even before anyone was born. The second part is as we are uh, coming into this world or getting ready to enter the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blows the ruh and with that he inspires the good and the evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajeem wa shamsi wa duhaaha wa al-qamari idha talaaha wa al-nahari idha jallaaha wa al-layli idha yakshaaha wa al-samai wa ma banaaha wa al-ardi wa ma tuhaaha wa nafsin wa ma sawaaha fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaaha qad aflaha man zakkaaha he swears by the sun and the moon, and by the day and the night, and by the heavens and the earth, and by the soul that he creates. He swears that he has inspired, and the way that he has inspired the evil and the good into that soul, he swears, he swears that the one who purifies the soul is indeed successful. And the one who destroys the soul, the one who lets it go to waste or lets it get buried, is the one who is unsuccessful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us successful in this regard. Help us do the tazkiyah of our soul of, um, and uh, improve in goodness and uh, uh, reject the evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the evil of our own selves. 
and evil consequences of our actions. But he did not leave it. Didn't leave it at the inspired knowledge. He actually did a favor, a bigger, much bigger favor to us by sending the revealed knowledge, which came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the angels to the messengers and came to us. Uh, the knowledge of the book, the scripture of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as knowledge was given to the messengers before Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, and um, in this regard, getting the, as far as getting the message is concerned, the first human got the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to their own circumstance. When Adam alayhi salam was being sent down um, in this word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ that whoever gets the message from me, then who will follow the message, there's going to be no fear and no grief for them. As for those who reject, that those who reject um, the message and refuse to uh, believe our verses, they're going to be in the hellfire and therein they shall dwell forever. May Allah SWT protect us among them and make us among the category who is successful through the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we know that Adam alayhi salam was given this much of message at least. Now, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final messenger of Allah and he was given the Quran which is the final message and the comprehensive message um, and it has reached us in the uncorrupted, unchanged format. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran so as we come out of the month of Ramadan, where we fasted and we read the Quran, Ramadan is the month of Quran. It is the month in which Quran was revealed. And in the Quran, there is guidance to men and clear proofs of guidance and distinction. The month of Ramadan is that in which Quran was revealed, a guidance to men and clear proofs of the guidance and the distinction, Al-Furqan. Therefore, whoever of you is present in the month, he shall fast. And how do we celebrate this revelation of Quran? We celebrate by standing up in prayer and reading Quran um, uh, in the night prayer especially and uh, in other prayers as well. And how do we celebrate revelation of Quran? We celebrate by having a day of Eid. Allah SWT talks in the same ayah, towards the end of the ayah, where he talks about the ruling of how to fulfill the number of fasts. If you miss the fast, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That Allah desires ease for you and he does not desire for you difficulty and he desires that you should complete the number and you should exalt the greatness of Allah and his having guided you and that you may give thanks. And all praise and all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Going to the Eid prayer or wherever you're praying, you say on the Eid day and actually the night before Eid, you start saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. We exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the message that He has given to us and we attribute all praise and all thanks to him. And Allah SWT says in the Quran about the Quran, Ya ayyuhan nas, qad ja'atkum maw'izatun min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatan lil mu'mineen. Wa hudan wa rahmatan lil mu'mineen. O people, there has come to you advice from your Lord and healing for what is in the hearts and guidance and mercy for the believers. Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi Say in Allah's grace and mercy, let them rejoice. This is better than whatever they accumulate. And we see in the Quran and we see in the Ahadith, a lot of places where Fadl is being mentioned. The Fadl is usually about the means of sustenance, the risk that you get or the good things that you get here for your, your consumption in this, this, this dunya. You go to the masjid, you say, Allahumma aftah li abwa bi rahmatik. You ask for Allah's mercy as you're going in to pray and to make dua and connect with other people. As you leave the masjid, you say, Allahumma inni as'aluka min fadlik, that, oh Allah, I ask you of your fadl, of your, of your grace, and uh, what it means, the commonly understood meaning, uh, you know, scholars have described that this is about the rizq, about the means of sustenance that you get 
um, as you leave the masjid and you take the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at your places of work and at your places of earning. So fadl most of the times it means the means of sustenance. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the Quran and he says that this Quran has come to you through the fadl and through the mercy. Through the grace and through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Quran is good for your dunya and it is good for the hereafter. As we go, as we celebrate the month of Quran, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al nar. Oh Allah, through this Quran, have mercy upon us. Through this Quran, open the doors of risk of the fadl for us and protect us uh, and give us goodness in the hereafter and protect us from the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from us um, and give us the blessing of Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us attain the uh, knowledge of Quran and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us of the Quran what we forget and um, uh, help us correct the mistakes if we have any errors in reading the Quran may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran a hujjah for us on the day of judgment and not a hujjah against us not a proof or evidence against us uh, inshallah so talking about the strengths the next in line is uh, about the messengers the role models that the messengers and the messengers came with the message so they brought the message there's no god except god uh, except one god allah and we are the messengers so follow us in following allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best role model for us of course is the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, there's an ayah in the quran which says laqad kana lakum fi rasulullah uswatun hasana indeed in the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's the best example for you and in words of his wife Aisha radiallahu anha when she was asked about the khuluq about the mannerism of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she said, Kana khuluquhu al Quran. His mannerism, his akhlaq was the Quran. May Allah SWT make us the ones who testify with their character what Quran is all about. So the people around us could see the Quran reflecting in our mannerism, in our uh, character, um, in our dealing with the world. We can show them what, what uh, difference Quran has made um, in our personalities, in our dealings, inshallah. And the Prophet Muhammad a lot can be said and time is limited. I'll just go over a few hadiths. The Prophet said that none of you believes until I am more beloved to him than his children, his parents, and the entire mankind. So this applies to both men and women. The Prophet has to be the most beloved to us among all human beings. And if we're not, we have to try and achieve that status. Read the seerah of the Prophet look at his sunnah, look at the sacrifice, look at the hard work that he did, look at the integrity that he had before being appointed a messenger and afterwards the way that his worst opponents the corrupt people of makkah they recognized the goodness in him even before he got the light of wahi even before he got Iqra, he was recognized as being the truthful and being the honest being the sadiq and being the ameen may allah SWT make us the truthful and the honest especially now that we have received the light of Qur'an and the knowledge of Qur'an and the guidance of Qur'an and the uswa of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and seeing the success, how he is successful, has been successful in this dunya and the success in the hereafter is ensured. May Allah SWT make us among his true followers. And of the sayings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he said that you're not a believer if you sleep on a full stomach and your neighbor sleeps hungry. And he said, a believer a Muslim is the one from whose hand and tongue others are safe. And Prophet said, Kullu ma'roof in sadaqa. All good deeds are sadaqa. Even smiling in the face of your brother is sadaqa. Or removing something harmful from the way is sadaqa. And he said that whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment should be generous with his guest. And he said, whoever believes in Allah and the day of judgment should speak something good or stay quiet may Allah SWT make us the ones who follow uh, the right guidance the quran and the sunnah of the prophet so talking about strengths the next one is our connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what kind of connection do we have with allah we have a direct connection with allah through praising him and through thanking him we stand up in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so many times a day and we attribute all of our praises and all of our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, we have to thank the people around us as well. For According to hadith, the one who does not thank people does not thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So go ahead and say thank you and say please and be kind and be appreciative of people around you. But at the same time, five times a day at least, you have to come back 
and you have to attribute all of those thanks and all of those praises between the two prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, you are the source of all goodness that has happened to me. You are the source of all beauty. You are the source of all benefit. You are the source of everything that I have received and benefited from, from the last prayer to this one or starting from the beginning of time. All the goodness is from you. Oh Allah, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And really, when we think about the benefits of saying Alhamdulillah and attributing the praises and thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's so many benefits but for us really it's not an option we can't say that okay you know if we're good we're gonna thank Allah and if we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're gonna be okay no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran wa idh ta'adhana rabbukum la in shakartum la azidannakum wa la in kafartum inna azabi la shadeed and when your Lord announced that if you give thanks I will give you more Alhamdulillah but then he goes on and says, if you are ungrateful, if you fail to thank me, if you refuse to thank me, my punishment is severe and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being among them. So in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make sure that you praise him and thank him and make dua to him. And that's the most powerful tool of a believer. That, you know, when we think about the acts of worship, sometimes we just think about prayer and we think about the fasting or we think about standing up in the middle of the night or we think about um, uh, giving in charity or going for pilgrim, but really dua is an integral part. There's a hadith which says that a dua u mukhul ibadah, the dua is the gist of worship, is the gist of um, uh, of the uh, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A dua u huwal ibadah. And if you think about it, the dua is the ibadah because all the acts of worship that we do, they include the prayer. Uh, in the salat, we have the prayers, in the hajj, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the uh, in the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ So as you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you improve your taqwa, as you read the Qur'an, as you get the guidance from Qur'an, as you enjoy the hidayah and the, the distinct uh, signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an and get the uh, uh, cognition of good and bad, you want to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ as my slave asks you about me, when you slave, when my slave, when my servant has that yearning, that desire for me, when he starts looking for me, when he asks about me, فَإِذْنِي قريب, I am near. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the ones who yearn, who seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only the month of, in the month of Ramadan, but beyond the month of Ramadan. And then comes our Salat, and then comes our, our Qiyam, and then comes our Rukur, and then comes our Sujood. May Allah SWT accept our Siyam, and our Qiyam, and our Sujood, and our Rukur. And the Sajda is the status in which a person is closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, according to the Hadith, that a person is closest to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the, in, the, um, in the status of Sujood. May He give us uh, uh, that and accept our Salat and Qiyam, and Ruku and our Sujood, and our Du'as. Allah SWT says about um, uh, the, uh, these acts of worship and my servant does not draw near to me with anything more beloved to me than the religious duties I've obligated upon him so the faraid and my servant continues to draw near to me with the nawafil the, the extra deeds until I love him and when I love him I become his hearing with which he hears and I become his sight with which he sees and I become his hand with which he strikes and I become his foot with which he walks uh, were he to ask something of me, I would surely grant it to him. And were he to seek refuge with me, I would surely grant him refuge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us refuge from, the, from Jahannam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. For there's a hadith which says that whoever seeks Jannah three times, uh, Jannah is going to make shafa'ah for him. And whoever seeks refuge from Jahannam, from hellfire three times, Jahannam is going to make shafa'ah for him. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma inna Nas'aluka al-Jannah, Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-Jannah, Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-Jannah, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-Nar, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-Nar, Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-Nar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the hellfire and grant us Jannah. So these are some of the strengths that we talked about. Now how about the weaknesses? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with weaknesses. And that was on purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us to test us. So the weakness that was exhibited by the first human, Adam alayhi salam, and the second human, Hawa, is the same kind of weakness or similar weakness that we also have within us, that we have forgetfulness or our commitment could sometimes 
uh, not be as strong. And sometimes our commitment is really, you know, we have, we have, we are in good spirits. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when He presented uh, the amana, inna aradna al amana ta'ala al samawati wal ardi wal jibali fa abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al insan inna hu kana zaluman jahula. Surely we offered the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they refused to be uh, uh, refused to bear it, and they feared from it. And man has. And the man uh, accepted that amana. Indeed, man is uh, ignorant and unjust. So uh, sometimes, our you know, we um, uh, make a commitment, but then other times we may not be uh, as good about fulfilling our commitments. May Allah Taala help us uh, with this weakness and also help us with forgiveness, as uh, He forgave Adam and his salam and Hawa. After they had the first uh, uh, slip, the mistake in Jannah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, taught them how to seek forgiveness, and through Adam alayhi salam, and through his story, and I believe that that's the first human story which was told not only to the first human being and his descendants, but has been told by every single prophet and has been told to us as well as the rahma and the fadl of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that you are the children of Adam, you have a weakness, you could forget. You could make a judgment error. You could your commitment may waver at some time. You may have temptations. You may give in to the whispers or to waswasa of shaitan. And when something wrong happens, immediately repent, turn back towards Allah subhanahu wa taala, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa taala. He's the one who could forgive all the sins, and he is going to forgive all the sins. All you have to do is ask. May Allah subhanahu wa taala help us. Forgive our sins. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. O Allah, indeed we have wronged ourselves. And if you don't have mercy upon us, and if you don't forgive us, we are going to be among the losers. So, what are some of the opportunities? And I want to spend a few minutes on opportunities of how to attain that closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to strengthen our ta'alluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to improve our iman, how to attain our taqwa, the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the desire to avoid the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the tools given to us is through fasting. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, uh, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usayamu, kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon. So one of the the intents of fasting, the way that people before us were given fasting. We've been given fasting, we've been granted this blessing of fasts, they've been prescribed upon us so we can attain taqwa, uh, the uh, God consciousness. The second uh, tool given to us is fair, being fair in your dealings. Um, the ayah from Surah Al Ahzab that uh, we talked about, Ya Yuhaladina Amanu Taqullaha wa qulu kawlan sadida, that you stay, you speak the truth and be unambiguous, straightforward in your speech. Allah is going to uh, straighten your affairs for you. He's going to rectify your affairs for you, and He's going to forgive you your sins. And whoever forget, uh, whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, um, uh, indeed, they have achieved a great success. And the next tool for uh, helping with our taqwa and with our contact and our taalluq relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the Quran. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Fadhkir bil Qur'ani man yakhafu wa'id." That you remind with the Quran whoever fears my warning. And uh, the reminder by Quran, you know, some of it is optional and some of it is compulsory, right? Standing up, standing up in prayer and reciting the Quran, some portion of Quran, uh, we have to recite it every single time we stand up in prayer. And some portion of Quran or reminder by Quran is compulsory on a weekly basis, right? So you stand up in, uh, you know, in khutbah of Jum'ah and uh, that's compulsory, right? To attend the khutbah of Jum'ah. And you get reminder. And Prophet used to used to always include the verses of Quran in his khutbah and remind us with the Quran not only during the prayer but also during the khutbah. And during the prayer on the Jum'ah, uh, Suratul Jum'ah, frequently he would recite Suratul A'la and Suratul Ghashiyah, which talk about tafkir and about the importance of giving reminder. And what better than Quran to give a reminder with? Um, so. I'm just going to talk about a couple of reminders that come in the Quran. First is about the purpose of our creation. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not create us to have a good life, enjoyable life, and not have any challenge. In fact, He says, "The one who created death and life, that He may try you. Which of you is best in deeds, and He is the mighty, the forgiving." So he created us to test us. And how does he test us? He tests us by providing us some things 
and he tests us by depriving of, uh, us of some things. In fact, the test of, de test of deprivation is universal. So he tested Adam salam with provision and with deprivation, the same way he tests us with provision and deprivation. Allah says, We will surely test you with some of fear and hunger and loss of wealth and lives and crops or the fruit of your toil. And give good news to those who patiently endure. Those who when afflicted by a calamity say to Allah we belong and to him we are returning. Upon these are blessings and mercy from their Lord and these are the guided ones. May Allah SWT make us among the ones who understand the tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being the tests and that will help us pass the tests. I'm going to cut it short. Um, but really, when I was reading this ayah, and this is the first time I thought about this ayah and looking at the situation that we're going through with COVID-19. And a lot is said about this, and this khutbah is not about COVID-19. But look at this ayah. When we think about the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is putting us through, that some people are are suffering from health issues and some people that we know of have passed on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to this infection or due to other causes and some are worried about their means of sustenance about their jobs some have been furloughed and some have been laid off and some uh, companies a lot of companies actually thousands of companies are bankrupt as a result of this and now look at this ayah some people are scared and some say that the fear of this infection is worse than the infection itself. So now look at this ayah which says, That we are surely going to test you with somewhat of fear, waljur and hunger, and loss of wealth, and people. People are going to die or they're going to lose their health, and fruits of your labor. So my brothers and sisters, this is a reminder for myself and reminder for, for you that we have to be patient in this circumstance and know that this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to his promise we are being tested and our knee-jerk reaction the gut reaction the first instance that the calamity hits us doesn't matter how it hits us it has to be inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un indeed from Allah we are and to Allah we shall return And by keeping good company, by attending the talks and religious gatherings and reading and writing and fulfilling the duties that Allah SWT has given to us, for each one of us who has knowledge of even one ayah, we are responsible for spreading the message. May Allah SWT give us tawfiq to understand the message, benefit from the message. May Allah SWT make this message go beyond our throats, into our minds, into our hearts, and reflect into our actions so that the Quran is not a hujja against us on the day of judgment it is a hujja in favor of us insha'Allah and according to uh, an ayah Allah SWT says O oh, you who believe fear Allah and let every soul consider what it has forwarded for the morrow and be conscious of Allah Allah is well informed of what you do and according to a saying of Umar حاسبوا قبل أن تحاسبوا that you account uh, uh, make yourself accountable uh, before you are held accountable with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it is easier for you to do it now um, and it is going to uh, than it is uh, to do it on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when nothing shall be hidden um, so inshallah I'll uh, uh, finish off with a dua اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم اللهم ذكرنا منهما نسينا وعلمنا منهما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار واجعله لنا حجة لا حجة علينا اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك 
اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا ومقامنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا اللهم إنا نسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ما علمنا منه وما لم نعلم اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا اللهم اعطك رقابنا ورقاب أمهاتنا وآبائنا من النار اللهم اغفر لنا ولجميع أموات المسلمين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانية ولنبيك بالرسالة وما على ذلك ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اعطك رقابنا ورقاب أمهاتنا وآبائنا من النار اللهم رب ارحمهما كما رب ياني صغيرا رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر